hey you guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to since day one before we get into this video today about lisa van allen as well as r kelly keith morrell and last but not least we have r kelly's goddaughter jane go ahead and like the video comment down below and if you are new smash that subscribe button to take flight with us Today is day 10 of the R. Kelly federal trial in Chicago about to start. Federal prosecutor Jason Julian is telling presiding judge Harry Leinenweber that Lisa Van Allen was hesitant to come to court today and the agents had to contact her to take her to court. Lisa Van Allen was on the witness stand all yesterday giving very emotional testimony to prosecutors before being subject to a heated at times confrontational cross-examination by Bu Brindley, defense attorney for R. Kelly co-defendant Darrell McDavid. The trial is beginning now with R. Kelly's lead defense attorney Jennifer Bonjean beginning her cross-examination of Lisa Van Allen. Jennifer Bonjean begins by asking Lisa Van Allen about her hesitancy to come to court today. Lisa Van Allen shoots back that hesitancy is not a refusal to cooperate. Didn't want to come and not coming are two different things, Lisa says. Jennifer Bonjean is now playing a clip of R. Kelly's Home Alone music video from 1998 on the set of which Lisa Van Allen says she first met R. Kelly. Lisa identifies herself as an extra in the video. Lisa Van Allen said yesterday she was 18 when she met R. Kelly, but she told him she was 17. Lisa denies lying to R. Kelly about her age, and she says she can't remember what she said, but that it's possible she misremembered the month in which Home Alone was shot. Lisa Van Allen says she doesn't recall telling anyone that Home Alone was shot in 1997, which Bon Jean challenges. Jennifer Bonjean produces a statement that Lisa gave to U.S. attorneys in 2008 in which she says she met R. Kelly in late 1997. Lisa says she just misspoke. Jennifer Bonjean is attempting to get Lisa Van Allen to admit to having relations with Jane when she was a minor. Van Allen doesn't deny it and breaks down into tears. I'm here to admit to my wrongdoings and hold R. Kelly accountable for what he did, she says. Jennifer Bonjean is now getting into whether Lisa Van Allen had a legal ID at age 18 for the purpose of traveling to Chicago. Jennifer brings up another interview Lisa gave to Homeland Security in which she says R. Kelly's co-defendant Milton Brown obtained an ID for her in order to travel. Lisa says she doesn't recall the interview that she used a friend's ID. Jennifer claims that Lisa's recounting of events to investigators in 2008 is off by about a year. When you spoke to the assistant state's attorneys, you said the Home Alone video shoot was in late 1997 when in fact it was in September of 1998. Lisa Van Allen denies lying to investigators about when she met R. Kelly as she says she based her recollection of events off the weather, but she doesn't deny her words in the interview transcript Bonjean produced. When I read y'all that she was basing stuff off the weather, I was like, what does the weather have to do with anything? And I was just so for sure she was going to jail. Jennifer Bonjean is now getting into Lisa's willing participation in several of R. Kelly's tours and music videos. Jennifer Jennifer is playing a snippet of R. Kelly's video, I Wish, in which Lisa Van Allen identifies herself braiding R. Kelly's hair. Bon Jean is continuing Brindley's strategy of trying to poke holes in Lisa Van Allen's testimony yesterday, now focusing on the abuse Van Allen says she suffered at the hands of R. Kelly. Jennifer Bon Jean is asking why Lisa Van Allen became close with Keith Morrell when she also said that R. Kelly prevented her from associating with other men. You described to us yesterday that you became quite close to Keith and other members of the talent group, says Jennifer. Lisa Van Allen rebused that she became friends with Keith and talent while R. Kelly was not around and restates that R. Kelly both physically and emotionally abused her. Bon Jean is now getting into Lisa Van Allen's history with R. Kelly, specifically the alleged threesomes. Lisa reaffirms her testimony yesterday that she had the threesomes at his request. He said he never had a threesome before and he wanted to have one with me. Bon Jean is bringing up Lisa Van Allen's relationship to Jane now. Lisa says she can't remember exactly when she met Jane but that she believes it was when R. Kelly allegedly brought them together for their first threesome. Lisa Van Allen says that she thought Jane was 16 when they met and that she didn't think it was wrong to have a threesome with her at the time because I had friends that age, Van Allen says. She learned Jane was only 14 during their 
first threesome two years later. Von Jean gets to Lisa Van Allen's move back to Atlanta after she decided to leave R. Kelly as well as her taking an alleged tape from R. Kelly's duffel bag. Jennifer Von Jean disputes whether Lisa Van Allen was looking for a specific tape featuring herself, R. Kelly, and Jane or if she was simply looking for any tape on which she was featured. Lisa says, I do know I wanted a tape with me on it. So in yesterday's testimony, Lisa Van Allen got tripped up when they asked her about the transcript of the 2008 R. Kelly trial that read that Lisa said, I have never seen a tape with just Robert and Jane, only me, Robert and Jane. This morning, she said one of the scenes on the tape featured only R. Kelly and Jane. So now today, Jennifer Bonjean is repeating Brindley's strategy yesterday of highlighting a discrepancy between Lisa Van Allen's testimony yesterday that she gave to investigators in 2008 regarding whether or not she ever saw scenes featuring only R. Kelly and Jane. At this point, presiding judge Harry Lennon Weber has called for a 15-minute break in the R. Kelly federal trial in Chicago. Court is now resuming in R. Kelly's federal trial in Chicago. R. Kelly's lead defense attorney, Jennifer Bonjean, is asking Lisa Van Allen about when she sent R. Kelly's alleged tape to her friend Keith Morrell in Kansas City. Was it before or after you stole R. Kelly's Rolex? Lisa Van Allen says she doesn't recall if she told Keith Morrell that R. Kelly's Rolex watch was worth $100,000 but denies sending it to him. She says she thinks it was Dan and Pryor, her ex-boyfriend who tried to sell the watch, and Lisa Van Allen says she gave Pryor the watch. Now they're getting back to Lisa Van Allen getting R. Kelly's alleged tape to Keith Morrell. Lisa Van Allen says she sent it via some kind of parcel service like FedEx, but that she can't remember exactly which one. She also denies giving Charles Freeman any copies of the tape. Similar to defense's questioning of Jane earlier in the trial, Jennifer Bonjean is now discussing Lisa Van Allen's relationship with R. Kelly, even after she took the alleged tape. Jennifer Bonjean brings up that after breaking up with Damon Pryor, Lisa Van Allen briefly lived with R. Kelly again and received financial support from him for herself and her daughter. Now they're getting into specifics of who had the alleged tape and when. Jennifer Bonjean asking why Lisa Van Allen went to R. Kelly after learning a tape had leaked rather than going to law enforcement. Lisa Van Allen says she didn't want to get R. Kelly in trouble and that she still cared for him. So the person you took the videotape from is now the person whose help you need to get it back from your trusted friend, Bonjean says. Lisa Van Allen affirms saying she thinks Morrell no longer had the tape as of 2007. Lisa Van Allen asked that she thought R. Kelly would have the most to lose, which is another reason she sought his help in recovering the alleged tape. Bonjean accuses Lisa Van Allen of trying to get money out of R. Kelly and recovering the tape it's all about money it doesn't make sense unless it's all about money she says lisa denies saying she just didn't want a tape of herself or a minor out there did you tell keith morrell if he came to chicago he would get money bonjean asked lisa says she thinks money was a part of her discussion with morrell but denies it was her prime motivator bonjean asked when was the last time she contacted morrell since r kelly's trafficking conviction van allen says she isn't sure jennifer bonjean is now showing the courtroom facebook messages between Keith Morrell and Lisa Van Allen. Bonjean says that they're from October 2008 but also from October 2018. I'm not sure which one is the misstatement. In the messages Lisa Van Allen tells Keith Morrell that R. Kelly's former manager and current co-defendant Darrell Big David said he should have murked her. Jennifer Bonjean is now continuing through the messages between Lisa Van Allen and Keith Morrell. Keith Morrell is trying to confirm Lisa Van Allen's identity asking her what happened at Howard's casino. SCX was Lisa Van Allen's reply. Bonjean also brings up messages mentioning acts between the two, which prosecution objects for relevance. Lisa Van Allen, through these messages, was trying to get in contact with Charles Freeman, who allegedly found an R. Kelly tape in Atlanta. Lisa Van Allen says she did not trust Freeman because she does not know him enough to trust him. Moving on from the messages, Jennifer Bonjean now directly accusing Van Allen of trying to extort R. Kelly for money with a woman named Adelina in 2002. Lisa Van Allen scoffs at the suggestion, why would I do that? With that, Bonjean concludes her cross-examination. Prosecutor Jason Julian returning for a brief redirect questioning of Lisa. Julian asked Lisa Van Allen had once mistakenly thought the 
Home Alone video shoot occurred in late 1997, but then later realized it was in fact 1998, and Van Allen affirms. Jason Julian, like many attorneys before him, accidentally uses Jane's real name while questioning Lisa Van Allen about their alleged threesome tapes. Reading from Van Allen's testimony in R. Kelly's 2008 trial, Julian has Van Allen saying the first thing that occurred when she had her alleged threesomes with R. Kelly and Jane was Robert set up his video camera. The defense objects for this line of questioning not being responsive. This wasn't the impeachment, Bonjean said. Julian rebuts it is responsive. Lennon Weber tells Julian to move things along as this was all mentioned in the direct examination. A lot of lawyer infighting that's hard to follow, ending with Judge Lennon Weber saying, let's move on. Julian moves on to another question about where Lisa Van Allen watched the alleged tape with Darrell McDavid. Citing another investigation report leading up to the 2000 2008 trial, Julian brings up that Lisa Van Allen says she saw the alleged tape in a hotel room corroborating her testimony from yesterday. Defense objects again, which Lyndon Weber sustains. Julian attacking Brindley's assertion yesterday that Lisa Van Allen wanted to be one of R. Kelly's victims for the clout and money it could bring. Did you have a book deal in 2008? Were you on Surviving R. Kelly in 2008? Van Allen answers no on both accounts. And I'm just trying to understand where they, where is they getting the information from? Because everybody knows Surviving R. Kelly came out in 2019. Julian concludes his redirect by asking Lisa Van Allen if she faked her emotions yesterday to manipulate anyone. Lisa Van Allen denies and is off the stand. And after two hours of questioning Lisa Van Allen, Jennifer Bonjean told the judge she had nothing further. Good. Lisa Van Allen said loudly, prompting Jennifer Bonjean to whirl around and say, ooh. Lisa Van Allen gave her a big smile. Next up on the stand is Deborah Rosenblatt, owner of the travel agency Preferred Travel. The company Rosenblatt says specializes in entertainment clients. R. Kelly's Bass Productions was a client for nearly 20 years starting in the 90s. Rosenblatt dealt with people on R. Kelly's team, including Milton June Brown and Darrell McDavid, R. Kelly's co-defendants. Rosenblatt says that R. Kelly's production company Bass Productions became one of their clients in 1997 but that that client relationship ended in 2016. Rosenblatt says that her company typically uses clients credit cards to pay for their services. Prosecution going over some boilerplate questions about how preferred travel employees fill out the company's credit card authorization form. Before prosecution can get any deeper into questioning Rosenblatt Judge Lyndon Weber calls for an hour lunch break in R. Kelly's federal trial in Chicago. Now that we're back in the R. Kelly overflow room and we'll be sending updates right now, it's rather dull testimony from Deborah Rosenblatt, the travel agent for R. Kelly's Bass Productions, who will testify about who was paying for hotels and such and when. Rosenblatt has taken the jury through hotel reservations made by R. Kelly's team for Lisa Van Allen and Keith Morrell in 2007 when they came to Chicago to take polygraph tests regarding the ported R. Kelly tape. Rosen Blatt is done. The next witness is Jerome Kemp, who had an apprenticeship with Columbia Records in the 1990s. Kemp is being called out of order due to a scheduling session, according to the prosecutors. We had heard that another alleged victim was next. Jerome Kemp is here to testify about Tracy, the pseudonym for one of the five victims alleged in the indictment to have been assaulted by R. Kelly when they were minors. He met Tracy when she was 16 or 17 when she interned at the same record company. Jerome Kemp says he saw Tracy at a basketball game at Hoops Gym in the West Loop where R. Kelly was too. He says he didn't see R. Kelly and Tracy interact that night. On cross-examination, Jennifer Bonjean pinning Jerome Kemp down on how old she was when he met her in the summer of 1999. Her birthday is August 1982, so either 16 or 17. The legal age of consent in Illinois is 17, something Bonjean has brought up repeatedly in this trial. The next witness in the R. Kelly trial is Keith Morrell, the Kansas City friend of Lisa Van Allen. Keith Morrell is testifying with the same Missouri draw as Chuck Freeman. He says he was in an R&B group named KOS, stands for Kansas City Original Sounds, but pronounced Chaos in the 1990s, which later became Talent. He met R. Kelly through R. Kelly's cousin, Blackie. Keith Morrell says his friend got R. Kelly's number from Blackie. His group called it and it went to voicemail and they sang one of their songs. They got a call back from R. Kelly's cousin and later they flew to Chicago to record at R. Kelly Studio Chicago Tracks. Morrell says he met Lisa Van Allen at a hotel in downtown 
Mackinac, Chicago in 2000 or 2001. We became friends and then we also became a little closer also. We started having relations with Lisa Van Allen and he says that Van Allen was also friends with R. Kelly. Morell says Talent left R. Kelly's label and he returned to Kansas City in the early 2000s and Van Allen sent him a videotape to his home. She just wanted me to hold it for her. They asked him, did you watch it? He says, yes. They said, how soon? He said right away it was Lisa, Rob, and another girl having relations. Morell says that he showed the video to four or five other people, including, I think, Chuck Freeman. I was excited to have the tape for one because it was Lisa on there and also Robert Kelly. He said he never considered selling it, but did make copies. Morell said that he was stunned in 2007 when McDavid called him and said they knew he had a tape. June Brown later called him and said, bring it to Chicago. Morell made a copy of about an 8 to 10 minute snippet of the tape to bring, saying, I didn't think that they would know the difference. After flying to Chicago with a copy of the tape, he met at a downtown hotel with Brown and Darrell. Also, there was Lisa Van Allen, a lie detector guy, and also like a tall guy who searched him, he says. Morell says he lied to the polygrapher when asked if he made any copies of the tape. They asked him why. He said, uh, because I didn't believe that a lie detector was really true, he says. And did you pass? He says, no, I failed. Morell says he came back to Chicago for a second time to turn over the real tape. This time, he brought a friend, Patricia, because I knew I was going to come back with a lot of money this time. When asked how Patricia was going to help, he said, said um i don't know when he gave them the real tape june brown told him i have the golden egg or something like that he handed the tape to mcdavid who arranged for him to take a second lie detector test morell said he passed the test this time mcdavid told me thank you and he shook my hand and gave me a hug and then he gave me the money also morell says it was a bag with eighty thousand dollars in cash they questioned morell and asked him what did you do with all that cash he says i don't remember low-key y'all he probably gambled it away look at him sitting there playing poker Morell says he and Chuck Freeman came to Chicago before R. Kelly's trial in 2008. He wanted to speak to R. Kelly because all this time, I never got the chance to talk to him about me having the tape and all that stuff. That conversation apparently never happened. And that was it for direct examination for Morell. Brinley is crossing him now. Keith Morell is answering rapid fire questions from Brinley, agreeing that he asked Lisa Van Allen to send him the tape because he wanted to see it and she never told him there was anything improper or illegal on it they asked him did it look like a regular threesome to you right he says yes brindley asked whether mcdavid threatened morell after he felt the first polygraph after initially saying no morell referenced the mysterious tall guy in the room he mcdavid said if i didn't come back this guy right here would come see me keith morell had previously said there was a tall guy at the meeting who searched him when he got there keith morell says lisa van allen was crying during that meeting because morell did didn't bring the original tape. Brindley said she had basically been crying because you weren't going to get paid. Morell agrees. Brindley asks about a 2018 Facebook Messenger chat shown to jurors earlier today in which Lisa Van Allen asked Morell about Daryl McDavid, threatening her in 2007. Brindley says up until then there had never been a hint that she'd ever been threatened. Morell agrees. Brindley asked Morell about the video shown to him by Freeman of R. Kelly and another female and whether he'd also seen it on the internet, and Morell says he had not. Brindley is done with Morell. The judge says anybody want to ask any questions, R. Kelly's attorney Jennifer Bonjean volunteers. And when it is Jennifer Bonjean's turn, she promises it's just a couple of questions. The judge sighs and says, you know it's 4.30 p.m. on a Friday. Prosecutor judge, I believe you sustained our objection on this point. The judge says, I don't remember what the objection was. The defense attorney says, I don't either, so let's proceed. Keith Morell tells Bonjean that he told Lisa Van Allen he could get this tape sold or something like that because she used to get mad when I play like that. Keith Morell agrees he tried to pawn a necklace that belonged to R. Kelly at Lisa Van Allen's direction. Morell says the police confiscated it after he told Lisa he Van Allen Lisa just stopped believing me as much as she used Bongine to. Bonjean asked Keith Morell did Lisa Van Allen tell you that Mr. Kelly's jewelry was worth $100,000? He says I don't recall. She says he says Van Allen stopped believing me when he tried to tell her that R. Kelly's diamond 
cross necklace have been seized by the police at a pawn shop in Kansas City. Jennifer Bonjean is already finished and now Morell is being cross-examined by an attorney for Milton Brown. Milton Brown's attorney is questioning whether her client was in a lawyer's office when Morell went there for a polygraph. He says, I don't know. I know when I got there, he was there. I don't have a reason to make that up. Assistant U.S. Attorney Elizabeth Pozzolo is questioning Morell again regarding a meeting Pozzolo had yesterday with Morell. She says it was to discuss a ruling by the judge. Pozzolo says Brindley opened the door to questions about the age of the additional female on the tape with R. Kelly and Lisa Van Allen by referring to her as a woman, but the judge sustains objections from the defense. And the second week of R. Kelly's trial has come to an end.